Around 8 p.m. on December 10th, 2021, a mile-wide EF-4 scours the outskirts of Haiti, Missouri, claiming the lives of eight people over an 80-mile path. This monster is the first violent tornado of the night. Just before 9.30, a tornado emergency is issued for Mayfield, Kentucky. This nocturnal beast claimed 57 lives and injured over 500 people. With a path of destruction over 165 miles long, this was the longest tornado of the night. Arguably one of the most terrifying videos from the outbreak, this high-end EF3 tracked directly through Bowling Green, resulting in 16 casualties. It's not just Bowling Green, it's not just Mayfield, it's not just uh, outside of St. Louis either. It's also our really small rural communities here in uh, South Central Kentucky, such as Saloma. On December 8th, the Storm Prediction Center highlighted a slight risk area for the Mississippi and Ohio River Valleys. The following day, it was upgraded to an enhanced risk area. By the 10th, it was upgraded again to a moderate risk area. As a powerful upper level trough moves in from the west, warm and moist air funnels in from the Gulf of Mexico. As the atmosphere becomes very unstable, Cape values climb to almost 2,000 joules per kilogram. The SPC issues a tornado outlook that puts Marion and Taylor County just outside of the hatched risk area, but still within the 5% zone. A tornado watch is issued for parts of Kentucky and Tennessee as storms begin developing in Arkansas around 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, and around 6.40 the first tornado touched down. The supercell that produced this tornado would go on to track 550 miles. It would produce two EF-4s and cause numerous fatalities. Further south, a new supercell was organizing that would track a high-end EF-3 directly through Bowling Green. After the tornado lifted, the storm would drop a few more weaker tornadoes before finally spawning one final EF-3 near Camelsville. Yeah, that's a big tornado. Uh, Moving towards the Lebanon area and the Bradsfordsville uh, area. A tornado warning is issued for Greene County, Hart County, LaRue, Taylor, and Marion County. Just before 3.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, a funnel falls from the sky near Saloma. The tornado touches down near Cheney Pike. Headed northeast, it causes EF-1 level damage to barns and some farm outbuildings, lofting debris thousands of feet up into the sky. Pieces of metal roofs and other belongings to people are found miles away. Still causing EF-1 level damage, continuing northeast, it uproots and debarks many trees along its path. It begins to intensify as it approaches Quisenberry Road. Residents in the valley had nowhere to go as the hellish nightmare raced over the ridge. Here's where the first EF-2 level damage occurs. Many mobile homes are completely destroyed, leaving nothing but cinder blocks where they once stood. The only fatality from the tornado would come from this area as a mobile home is completely obliterated. Continuing off to the northeast, the tornado intensifies even further and widens out as it sets its sights on Sanders Road. It develops a significant debris signature as it intensifies to its most violent point. With winds of 145 miles per hour, it causes mid-range EF3 level damage. Some homes had their roofs taken off one house had its entire second story blown away, and one was destroyed all the way down to its subfloor. One home in particular sustained the most violent damage. Residents of this home watched in horror from their basement as their entire home was completely ripped from its foundation and thrown across the fields. The homeowner on the left explains how he and his family barely survived the immense power of the storm. As if by some sort of luck, debris had fallen over onto the family which protected them from being sucked out into the winds. This home sustained the most violent damage from the tornado. Being completely destroyed and thrown across the fields, there was almost nothing left of it. Cars were tossed like toys, 
trees were debarked, and the ground was scoured. The tornado grows even further to a quarter mile wide, but weakens substantially to an EF2. It makes a slight turn to the east and heads directly for Clay Hill Memorial Forest, where deforestation takes place. Trees are snapped, bent, debarked, and uprooted. Metal from building roofs are lofted into the trees where they still remain today, a year and a half later. The storm continues over the Clay Hill Forest and goes directly over Muldraw Hill where it destroys a couple more mobile homes and causes EF2 level damage to farm buildings and homes. It tracks over some wooded area before crossing US Highway 68, causing EF1 level damage to a couple homes. It crosses Calvary Road, doing damage to more homes before heading back into some more wooded area. The damage starts to become more sporadic as the tornado weakens, causing damage to weak structures and slight deforestation. The tornado finally lives two miles west of Bradbardsville, near Highway 49. By the morning of the 11th, 71 tornadoes touched down across the U.S. The outbreak took the lives of 89 and caused $3.9 billion in damages. With near EF5 strength, the 190 mile per hour Western Kentucky tornado caused catastrophic damage and still remains a topic of discussion today. For the residents of Central Kentucky, events like this are few and far between. The Saloma tornado passed within five miles south of my house and I can't remember the last time such an intense storm moved through the area. The Saloma tornado unfortunately claimed one life and injured 31 others. Thankfully, when it took the turn towards the east, it spared the more populated area of Lebanon. The tornado was thought to have been a high-end EF3 with peak winds of 165 miles per hour. The National Weather Service determined that it was a mid-range EF3 with peak winds of 145 miles per hour. The tornado tracked 15 miles and had a peak width of a quarter mile wide. It was the last intense tornado of the outbreak. Though there would be more tornadoes to touch down afterwards, they would be smaller, weaker, and cause no more fatalities. With the National Weather Service in Taylor County, he shows us the damage they found and the stories of those who survived. Homes flattened, trees stripped, cars tossed, a life lost. In rural Taylor County, Kentucky, near the small town of Saloma, residents save what little possessions weren't destroyed from a tornado in the early morning hours of December 11th. Amanda Dye was alone when the EF3 tornado leveled her home of nine years. She decided to spend the evening in the basement knowing severe weather was expected. She got the alert a tornado was coming and rushed to take cover. Shortly under, after I get under the stairs, all of a sudden the basement door from the outside just whoosh, just blew into the basement. It took only seconds to wreak havoc. Oh my gosh, the whole house is gone. Uh, the, I didn't see the car. I didn't see the carport. I mean, everywhere I looked, there was nothing. Down the road, Karen Sanders had seconds to react to her phone's weather alert, crouching in front of a recliner as she covered her head while her mother took shelter in a bedroom. Both survived, but their home, built in 1825 and in the family for eight generations, is beyond repair. It's the same story for dozens of others in this small community. Its greatest loss suffered inside a mobile home whose resident never made it out. Her landlord says he never felt so helpless. Days later, the feeling of defeat is turning into hope. We had a gentleman just walk up to us in the yard yesterday and, you know, asked, are you the homeowners? My husband said yes, and he, he just handed him $200. We don't even know this man. Small gestures from locals and people across the state pouring in to help those affected rebuild. The storm that moved through central Kentucky early that morning forever changed the lives of dozens of people and has for sure left a lasting impact. A majority of the homes have been rebuilt, but the scar still remains. Even a year and a half later, the deforestation to the Clay Hill Forest is still very apparent. This photo was taken just days after the tornado occurred. And this video is from June 2023. The community would come together the following day in support of the victims. 
Thousands of dollars in supplies would be donated and hundreds of volunteers would help clear the debris so the process of rebuilding could begin. But to the people who were in the direct path of the storm, their lives would never be the same.